All right, first on the clock to finish up the second round of the mock it up before you fuck it up. We got old Big Co for Kevin's team, another wildly creative name for his <laughs> team here. Uh, Kevin in the first round had two picks. He s- traded um, LaShawn McCoy at the uh, middle of the season for Tyree Cohen in a first, which is a solid move for him, I suppose. He wasn't going to win. He was out. Right. It's a um, good move now. So he ended up getting Rojo and Calvin Ridley in this pick. So, or in his last uh, pick in the first round. So who who you got for him at two seven here? Ooh. Going with a beer. It's a revelry beer. That's who he's going with two seven. <laughs> revelry beer off the board at two seven. <laughs> uh, uh, Kevin, yeah, like Casey said there, yeah, Kevin's team's come a long way from after getting good two first round picks starting out with rojo and uh calvin ridley there a couple of good solid rookie names on your list thinking about throwing another good solid rookie name on his list here with mike gasecki got to throw out the tight end here the 6'6 250 pounder that went a 6763 cone at the combine 454 <sighs> speed just 99th spark athlete oh my god just crushed the combine no real surprise this is kind of Oh, pretty much the next guy in line after these guys, especially if it's not a premium. He could have gone out, out, out of the draft years ago. Sure. For sure. Yeah, we, we threw his name around last podcast here going through 2-1 through 2-6. It, it was up and down with a couple of guys there. Um, to each his own, whether or not you want – like Casey said, this is a, a just tight end regular draft here, um, You know, not 1.5 or anything, no premium on the tight end spot. Kevin's team here sitting with Jimmy Graham, and that's it. So it's a really good stab here to throw yeah. on his team. Not only was it kind of basically the next guy in line, but it was a, a good pick for him to have a guy like Jimmy Graham on his team and then be able to sit a guy like Kaseki behind Graham for, for a season or two. Right, exactly. Definitely uh, no pressure to try to get him in your lineup anytime soon with Jimmy Graham going over there to play with Aaron Rodgers, and now you get a guy like Gusecki who we all know that you don't – you're not supposed to – you know expect much out of a young tight end anyway coming into the nfl he's already gotten some hype uh got a lot of hype coming out of the combine and then you know hayden hurst goes first tight end in the draft but the real first real playmaking type tight end hayden hurst more of a dual threat blocking and receiving kind of guy perfect ravens guy yeah good ravens kind of guy but now gasecki is hey you know josh mcdan no not josh mcdaniels he's the the guy over adam there for gase the, adam gase you know, we've had that discussion before. Was it Adam Gase? Was it Peyton Manning that made the old tight end over there any good when they, he was on the Broncos? And um, Julius Thomas, I'm talking about, he's actually spent time at the Dolphins with Adam Gase, and it didn't really work out too good. But he's out of there. And now, so guess Gasecki's looking to split to get the targets that he got, maybe gobble up those 44 catches that, 41 catches that Julius Thomas had last year, and then take part in getting some of those 160 targets right. that Jarvis Landry leave, leaves behind. Yeah, and he's mostly kind of a slot player. He's not really an in-line tight end. I think I saw him in end. line twice, but he ran routes both um, times from that. Yeah, so he's not, not trying to block. You're not looking for any of that. And they no. weren't looking for any of that. They drafted another blocking tight end, and uh, uh, Dylan Smythe, I think is his name, Um so that they, they kind of set up that two tight end thing and being able to the, the, the Dolphins are looking for playmakers mismatches. Yeah, they got a guy here in, in Gasecki who could potentially be that you mentioned the spark score and the freak athlete and he was great in the red zone. Obviously, he's huge. Um, you, you're not expecting huge things out of Gasecki year one. You'd be pulling your hair out trying to figure out if you should start him or not or yeah, you know, which yeah. weeks because one week he'll crush it and then there'll be three weeks where he doesn't do anything because exactly. he's a rookie. They're already saying how he you know looks look, lost looks, looks a little first lost couple out practices. there and, yeah, yeah we've definitely been spoiled with a couple of tight ends recently doing well in their rookie year and now we're like oh man maybe this could be a trend but it's the the reality is is it takes this these this position to some time to and i mean to to be fair though i mean there's not like obviously have Devonte parker we've been waiting for that to happen for a while for jarvis is out of there the target uh, hog you got kenny stills which necessarily isn't a volume guy uh Amendola's in there now, and, and you have Le- Carew, who's probably... Albert he, Wilson. He's out there. He's out of the uh, rotation there. Yeah. Roster bubble. See ya. Yeah. A- and then, like you said, they brought in Albert Wilson, and they still have uh, the little guy, Jakeem Grant. Jakeem Grant. Um, so they're looking for playmakers out there. So there's a, there's a chance that he could see a lot of targets, even if he, you know... Can't block. Isn't 
fully developed on where he's supposed to go and what he's supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I think if he develops, his, I think to get a lot of targets, he needs to develop on what he, at least where he needs to kind of direction he needs to head in, you know? Sure. Um, but yeah, he is not coming out of college saying, hey, watch how good I can block. And the Dolphins knew that when they drafted him. I think, like you said, if any team, I do have a team where I got Gusecki on uh, in a rookie draft and it's not where I'm, I'm not looking to start him anytime soon. And I don't think anyone that drafts him should be looking for that. But he's a really safe pick in the middle of the second round i've seen some people go a little higher on him even in a one tight end league already um but in you know a two seven here it's a really safe pick because you don't you shouldn't there's no really like hey lack there's no really you know bust no, nobody there's jumping no, there's no bust potential for him really this year other than like you know sure maybe, definitely get an extended window on the tight end. exactly the tight end window is big unless he comes out right. there and they're Plus, like this dude's so bad he's not even getting on the field at all we're in the spot where there's there's nobody else that's jumping off the page of being this like crazy great situation crazy athletic guy that's just like basically the consensus this guy's really good we kind of at the end of last show we kind of capped it off with saying this is kind of the end where it's a little bit where no man's land kind of starts it's kind of pick your poison who you like who you don't like yeah once your james washington and anthony millers are gone i mean i'm not a huge fan of you could go before them or they could yeah i'm not a huge fan of michael gallup but once those his target obviously he's the targets he's gonna should walk into with the cowboys those kind of guys same conversation with gasecki he's right up in there with just what casey's trying to say there so i like the gasecki pick for this team and I feel good about putting him on Kevin's team because, like I said, he's got the got the Jimmy Graham guy there in front of him to, to plug in and, and go from there. Yeah, I definitely don't hate this pick. I think you could take him almost anywhere you wanted to in this second round if it's tight end premium. You know, you can he's he's a great home run cut. Um, he's definitely got name cachet. He checks all of the metric boxes, so he's going to hold value with that that realm of people for a while. He's going to have that built in time for the for the rookie tight end. Um, I will say that, like, you know, he, he seemed to gear down slowly. Like, he ran a great three-cone drill, but I didn't always see that great change of direction. He's a bigger dude. but I mean, he's a tight end. Yeah, 6'6", 250. But, he, I mean, he did run a pretty full route tree, and, and it, it looked pretty good for the most part. The hands are, are soft as hell. He's, I read that he hadn't dropped the ball in over two years, um, so that's, that's great. You yep. see him... You see him lining up pretty much out wide every time, so he, he's running all kind yeah. of routes and and soft. He's kind of like so. your he's an he's like an Ertz type player, right? Here. And that's what you're looking for. So it's a great swing, great pick, right? Yeah, you could put a you could put a Zach Ertz Jr. on your team and hope that he comes around and be super. I mean, obviously Adam Gase is supposed to be one of those youngest, you know football mind kind of co- you know coaches so anything and and the last thing here is you know he's a basketball player you know everybody that was a big thing and then state you, slam it, dunk champion it became such a big thing that it, it was a white guys don't usually get to hold that a, crown a joke <laughs> it was a punchline for tight ends oh well if, if he played basketball he's gonna be good you he's know. got good feet not, yeah. not only did Gasecki play was a star basketball player he's a star high school volleyball player volleyball too. of course <laughs> so if he's spiking it Bump, over the set, net spike he's He's spiking it over Ned, and he's winning slam dunk competitions. Looks he's obviously going to be a good you know? NFL tight end. There's no chance he yeah. won't be. Talk yeah. about a hole in one. <laughs>